Let's bring in Marco Lambertini from the World Wildlife Fund, joining us uh, from the summit. Marco, thanks for being with us. Um, tell us how urgent you think it is that action is taken at this summit. Uh, first of all, uh, I cannot underscore enough the tragedy and the seriousness of the situation. As you said in your opening, uh, we have the evidence of our impact on the natural world. Half of the forest, half of the coral reefs are gone. 80 percent of wetlands, one million species under threat of extinction, 69 percent decline of global wildlife population on land, freshwater, ocean in the last 50 years, a blink of an eye compared to the history of life on Earth. So the situation is very serious. In fact, it's as dangerous as climate change because it's pushing entire ecoregions like the Amazon, entire ecosystems like mangroves or coral reefs to the brink, to the to collapse point, to tipping point. And we understand now that nature conservation is not just only a moral issue for us, it's actually a security issue for humanity because we depend on climate security, water security, food security from healthy natural system. Think about the pollinators role in producing crops and food for us. Think about fishing rivers and ocean that supports the diet, nutrition of billions of people. So the situation is very serious. As you said at the beginning, this is the opportunity for our society nature negative today to become a nature positive one, a society that can decouple economic development from environmental destruction in the interest of all life on earth, but particularly, I have to say, in our own interest. And that's a new realization that is driving ambition in the discussion here in Montreal. So na nature negative, as you say, Marco, trying to become nature positive, and you mentioned uh, pollinators. So, you know, it's as much about bees as it might be about pandas and orangutans uh, and about other species and other aspects of our biodiversity. It's the whole thing that we're talking about. How concerned are you that there are no um, big hitters, major world leaders who will be there? Because surely they're the people whose, whose heads you want to knock together to get the message through. Well, yes, it is disappointing that world leaders were not invited specifically to a high-level head of state segment here. But let's not consider that the major problem. The major issues are actually political divisions and tensions today in the world that are preventing multilateralism in general to function. And this is a multilateral agreement, like Paris was. But on the other hand, um, uh, as you also said at the beginning, we have more than other countries committing to very ambitious goals. And those ambitious goals, those commitments will go uh, we'll try to codify them into, into the final agreement. But even if the agreement is short of ambition, those that coalitions of governments and businesses as in, and investors will continue to drive uh, uh, towards an initial positive outcome. So the objective here is, as a minimum, to have a clear direction, clear goal for nature codified in the agreement, as we did of Paris. The 1.5 degrees in Paris, the equivalent for nature, will be actually a halt and reverse nature loss by 2030, a nature positive global goal. That will send a signal to society, to, to governments, to the markets that actually this is the direction on biodiversity. And together with the one on climate, represent a double compass for our sustainable uh, future. Because we know today, by the way, that without nature's ability to absorb and store carbon, we will never be able to reach a one pi. One, one, 0.5 degrees uh, of global warming future. So nature is essential and the conference has to agree on a global direction that then will inspire funding, ratcheting of goals and targets and action and implementation. Indeed, it all, it's all about the willingness, I suppose, of, of countries to actually take this on board and live through it. Marco, let me pause you for a second and bring Valerie back in our environment editor, Valerie de Kim. Um, Marco talking about, reminding us about what happened in Paris and the, the climate accords mm. and very often we've reported on the fact that we're not on target to, to, to meet that important figure that was outlined then back in 2015. So I hate to be pessimistic, but do we feel, looking at it from, from the perspective journalistically, that this is going to add up, that there can be an agreement hatched in Montreal which will actually work? Right. I mean, I, I don't want to be pessimistic either, uh, but I think that for now, you know, the chances of, of landing a deal or perhaps let's just say a good deal are pretty slim. But, you know, you never know. There could be surprises. Uh, we have to see at the end of the conference. But I think the bottom line, the reality is that the UN's biodiversity uh, summits have 
you know, been overshadowed by their climate counterparts this year, for example, COP27 in Egypt. And the pressure, though, is growing for the biodiversity track to get as much attention as the climate track. Negotiators are un also under pressure to get this deal after a two-year delay. Uh, online discussions have certainly delayed uh, progress, have slowed down progress. And what we know is that negotiators met uh, for three days before the opening of COP15 uh, for last minute, you know, talks before. And we know that they were not able to get a clear draft for the negotiations. And so that is not a good sign. Um, and also important to note, Mark, that in 2020, about 90 countries signed a pledge for COP15 to deliver strong and robust goals. But we need 195 countries for that. Marco Lambertini will be working on that. Thank you, Marco, for joining us from the World Wildlife Fund at the uh, summit. We'll be coming back to you, hopefully, for an update as things develop. Thank you, sir. Thank you to Valerie de Kemp, our environment editor, too. Thank you both Thank you. for being with us and giving us that briefing on the situation. It's important to all of us that progress is made on this, so I'll uh, leave you with that.